Today I'm going to review the Dungeons & Dragons board games. Uh, there's three currently available. This is Wrath of Ashardalon, and then there's Castle Ravenloft, and The Legend of Driz. There's also, uh, in the past, there was a Dungeons & Dragons game, um, which you see here, with, well, you see the miniatures, um, and, um, in fact, two sets of the miniatures, and, and that had an expansion as well. Uh, there's the miniatures from that. Uh, so I'm going to talk about all of these games, uh, and I'm going to start with a quick review of what you actually get in the box. Uh, so this is Castle Ravenloft. Um, one rule book. Nah, trying to sell me stuff. One book of adventures, and when you say adventures, I mean the whole thing's on one page. It's not a complicated thing. This is a board game. Uh, so you get a pack here of tiles. Uh, I'm going to try and open this. May have to um, hit the pause button. Oh, seriously. Obviously I haven't had enough coffee today because that was a low IQ moment. So the tiles come with um, a number of floor tiles, various counters and stuff that you can use in the game. Um, they are single sided. Uh, and also underneath here, right at the bottom we get another pack probably about twice the size of that first one. So, let me try that again. Okay, more dungeon tiles. Ravenloft is particularly crypt-like. Various ones are marked here with sarcophaguses and so forth. Uh, oh, no, there's the camera. Um, and then uh, one here is a little, little bit of variety. There's apparently a fetid den. Uh, seems to be just the one tile of that. Oh, and there's an arcane circle. Uh, a chapel and apparently a laboratory. Um, that's the start tile and you get a few big monster cards. So this is um, Count Strad von Zarovich, which I think in the D&D &D mythos is the original vampire. Um, and then you get your player character cards um, and a couple of the smaller monsters. Uh, so a young vampire, a flesh golem and a werewolf. Um, along with a, you know, a few other cards, I mean, I might actually use one of these tokens for 5th edition of when my barbarian rages. Um, you also get, wrapped like a packet of cigarettes, various cards. So these are special abilities for the players that they can use at uh, any time. Um, and then you get some environmental things, which I'll explain later, possibly and, uh, events and uh, things that can happen in the game. And then there's another deck. Yeah, obviously smoking 40 cards a day. Um, another deck, more events, some trap cards, and then you get the monster cards. Uh, so it's got everything you kind of need to run the monster on that card. Uh, so as you can see, loads and loads of cards in this game. Um, as for the gameplay itself, uh, I believe this is true of all three, um, it's kind of like a very frenetic dungeon bash. So you, every turn, there's monsters appearing, there's stuff hitting the walls and um, you know, things going on around you, stray arrow fire, all this kind of stuff. It's playable for one to five players, and let's face it, if you had time to play a Dungeons and Dragons game, you'd play the real thing, not the board game. So why did I buy four D&D board games? And two of the originals and an expansion? Well, put simply, it's for the miniatures. Because for 36 quid, you get 40 odd miniatures. Uh, they vary, I think it's sort of between 40 and 42-ish, I think, per box. 
Um, so I bought two of the Wrath of a Shardalon sets because they're really useful miniatures to have in quantity and I've got one each of Legend of Drizzt and Castle Ravenloft. This is the dragon from the Wrath of a Shardalon set and he's quite a mean looking dude. Also comes with this Rage Drake. Now, Rage Drake is a monster that first appeared in 4th edition. Um, and then we've got an Otyug, one of the old school monsters. Uh, and in the old school book, it's number appearing 1 to 2, usually 1, sometimes 2, so having two sets isn't a waste. Absolutely, I'm totally justified in buying it twice. Um, so I've got these snakes here that I've painted up as red I painted the other three up as green so I've got options there and then we get the grell uh, which I misread the monster description and did it all olive it's supposed to be olive tendrils and a brain like colour at the top so that was a bit of an error on my part but um, six grell always handy a lovely obscure monster that when it arrives is proper terrifying you get these cultists, uh, so there's three of these guys. Um, you know, not the most detailed model, but really easy to paint. It's always nice to see a really heavily dry brush cloak. You then get some Duragar, which I've painted up more as dwarves. Um, oh, so there you go. So you get three of those, and then you get. This guy, which is one of the named characters in the set or named bad guys, if I can get that in focus, there we go. Um, so, uh, Mace Wheeling Dwarf or Duragar. And you get what they're called in this set a beholder, but um, I find it a bit small. In fact, if I show you, here it is. This is a, a Reaper Bones version of a beholder. And you see quite a difference. So, I'm going to use this as a spectator rather than a beholder because, uh, you know, it's only. Oh, there it is. It's only six eye stalks anyway, which is exactly right for a spectator. Um, you get some bears. So I've painted these these up as uh, six grizzly bears, or brown bears, whatever. I'm still toying with the idea of doing the other three in black rather than brown. I've painted them brown at the moment. Um, you get these guys, which they call. Um, oh, where's the camera? There we go. Uh, they call this a legion devil. Um, so I'm going to use them as tieflings. And then you get some gibbering mouthers. Three of these guys. Oh, dropping things. Try and get this in focus. Come on, focus. Focus! No, it's not happening. Focus is not happening. I'm going to put it down. There we go. So three of these guys. I just put another one in there as you see it from the back. So this is a creature that's covered in mouths and uh, and, and eyes and various you know, bits of body and stuff. So quite quite grotesque. And actually, this is one of the Cthulhu monsters from Reaper Bones, which is like a very large version of the gibbering mouther. So I was thinking of doing something particularly special with, you know, three of them come together, form a big monster, the players kill it and becomes three individuals again, and then they try and... If they kill one, then there's not enough to form a big one, but hey, I've got six of these, so uh, that'll make a, a pretty horrific encounter for the players. Then lastly, you get the heroes. It's always good to see a Dragonborn hero. We've got a, a Dragonborn caster. Um, it's so hard to get Dragonborn miniatures because they're quite expensive when you buy them from um, the various different retailers. You get a dwarf wielding a warhammer, so useful as a cleric or as a fighter. You get this lady here holding a sword and a kind of dueling pose. Ha ha! There's this dude here holding a, a pick and a shield. Um, you do get unusual weapon combinations actually in these sets. I mean, here we go, there's another guy who's holding a short sword and a handheld crossbow. Um, so, you know, weapons people wouldn't normally uh, take in a D&D &D game, they're represented here, which is useful. And 
to an extent, a little bit annoying. Because um, no, you can only use a miniature, or, or the way my guys tend to play is that is they choose the miniature based on what weapons it's holding. It, it's a problem if I don't have one, or in this case, it probably means they'll never get used. The original D&D game had some interesting monsters, so um, first up you have the skeleton. And the way they did this monster was like an old Roman legionnaire. He's got kind of a legionnaire's helmet, he's carrying a net and a trident. Uh, and you get six of those. You then get four of these ogre guys. Uh, ogre's always useful to have around. Then we get some... Uh, we get four bugbears. We get five gnolls. It always used to bother me in the original game that the gnolls were supposedly carrying a ranged weapon as well as a melee weapon, but this model just has a shield and an axe, so where's the bow? We get six goblins, so I've gone for the old school schemes of yellow, orange and red skin as opposed to green, but also I have my other set is painted up as six green, so I've got a full range of colours for the goblins. And there's the trolls. I've never particularly liked this model, always thought it was kind of a strange model. Uh, there's a much better troll in one of the other boxes we'll come to shortly. And there's the carrion crawlers. Uh, it's cool to get a carrion crawler in the box. It's a rare monster. You, you know, you don't see models like this around very often, so it's cool to get some of the more peculiar D&D monsters in these boxes. And then there's the four heroes, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, before I do, it's the models from one of the expansion sets. Uh, if it, get in focus, there we go. So you get the wolf, you get three of these. You get three of these frost salamanders. Two of these goblins uh, flying on an eagle. And lastly, you get a very camp looking dragon. I always call this the, the camp pose. It's just like, oh, don't hurt me. Uh, which I just think is quite hilariously posed. You also get a Barbarian model, which I've lost over the years, because this is quite an old set. OK, so these are the heroes. Uh, these are, obviously, were painted a very long time ago, and I, I never painted the other set, because you don't need two sets of heroes. Um, but I've just finished painting them anyway. I decided to finally do them. And they're just drying from varnish, so I'm just going to put this down to protect my table. And uh, there's the, oh, let's uh, adjust that. So you get a fighter. Uh, not really the best model in the world, but he's carrying a bow on his back, he's got a sword, he's wearing plates, so it's a very useful model to have. Then we get a cleric, a very traditional cleric, full plate armour, mace and a shield. And he's got a little sash there that I've painted purple. Much like the old one, in fact, I can barely tell it apart from how I did the previous one. I didn't actually look, I, I just kind of did it, and that's how it turned out. Uh, you then get the wizard. Um, she's holding this sort of ball of energy and a spear, and that's my alarm, hang on. And then finally we get the thief. we just got little elven ears and um, a crossbow which nobody takes in D&D, at least first edition. Uh, maybe I have to look up the stats in fifth, see if they've finally fixed them. Did I show the Wraith model? I'm not entirely sure I did. And I've also just realised I'd missed uh, two whites and a necromancer, so I'm just going to get those. These really aren't my best painting. Uh, these are really old models, and I've never painted up the, the others, because I don't particularly like the models much anyway. Um, so you get two of... Oh, let me focus. So you get you get two of these dudes. Uh, I think they're meant to be whites, and this guy is a wraith. Um, kind of whatever, really. On those, I'm not big. Oh, dropped one. Not really a big fan of those models. Um, it's the wild hair. It just doesn't really do it for me. Uh, but just in case I missed it, this is the the spectre. And again, it's kind of an odd model. You know, when you compare that to the Bones version of the same thing, and the Bones one really has some character to it. It looks like it's fast, it's flying through the tombstone, they've got a little skull face there, just to really give it some character. In summary then, the older board game is really useful for 
some rank and file stuff. You know, it's always useful to have a few gnolls. It's always useful to have some goblins. It's always useful to have a collection of skeletons. It's always useful to have bugbears and ogres. So some handy characters, a smattering of undead. You've got generic and commonly used heroes. Um, so really a useful set, but I don't think you're going to see any particularly amazing heroic pieces in there. You know, stuff that you'd... That there's nothing there that you'd really want to use as the culmination for an adventure. What you've got is lots of rank and file stuff that's handy and useful to have. In the expansion set, yes, it does have a dragon, it's got those goblin eagle riders, but goblins riding eagles seem weird to me anyway. Um, so it's a few useful models, but it's nothing to really get excited about. And to be honest, the dragon's a bit ridiculous. Um, I wouldn't use that as an end of adventure feature piece. He's just a, an incidental detail in a large dragon lair, as far as I'm concerned. Whereas Wrath of Ashardalon has a good mix of some rank and file in the dwarves and the cultists, and also the unusual in the Otyokes and Rage Drakes, and, and it has that all important feature piece, the adult red dragon. Buying two sets certainly opens up some possibilities when you've got six cultists. I mean, 13 would be better, but six is a, a good number to have. Um, there's no harm in having six snakes, six bears, six tieflings, or uh, whatever they were called again. Um, oh, crikey. Devil legions. Um, the mouthers, I, I already explained earlier what we can do with those. And, and you know, ev even two dragonborn heroes. Are, well, um, yes, yeah, sure, it can be a hero. But I painted them both up so I can use them as monsters. And the same with the dwarves, because I've got a few rank and file dwarves. I've painted up the dwarf hero as well, so that I can have... Uh, a little dwarf enclave. Whilst I might not throw six snakes at players, doing them in different colours is certainly useful. So I've got the three green and the three red. Uh, lots of grey. Grey are always good. And with two sets, I can finally do the number of appearing two when it comes to Otyuks. So now I'm just trying to figure out which models came with which of the other games. Um, so I'm just opening up Legend of Drizzt here. Uh, which is a much more cavern-y set, so, um, yeah, it feels more like it's underground and not naturally made. Um, so, does that model look like any of these? I don't know. Ah. Could be the assassin. I'm still confused. Um, so, yeah, that's not helpful. Uh, no pictures on there. Ah, Drow Wizard. No, it's not helping. Not helping! So, some of the events, for example, in this one you get a stalagmite. Um, the looming shapes ahead turns out to be nothing but a cave for formation. Nothing but a cave formation. It's really hard to read in this light. Do not place a monster. Um, okay, sounds a bit dull. Give me stuff to kill. Uh, let's have a look. So. Must be struggling to count because this cannot be right. Which models go with which? Okay. So let's go through the Legend of Driz monsters. Uh, well, we'll start with the heroes. So, first of all, you have this dual mace wielding dwarf. So, as far as unusual weapon combinations go, it's a cool model, right? Because I certainly have never seen another model with a dual wield mace holding character. Um, but the thing is, I don't think I've seen anyone play one either. Um, this model's a bit more useful. This is a halfling with a mace. Um, so that's really useful because you don't often see halfling cleric models. Uh, so now we finally have one. Then we've got a very generic barbarian. Let me get him in the middle. There we go. Um, to which I kind of feel whatever. Um, 
and then we get a kind of generic archer. Uh, so female archer, um, always useful. Um, and then we may or may not have, depending on which box set this is meant to be in, I think that's meant to be an assassin, which I've kind of painted up as a dual wielding kind of person in earth colours. So, um, right, so that's the heroes. Now the monsters, this one is just awesome. It's a tiger. Uh, let me give you close-ups. Come on, get in focus. Now, I think it was meant to be a panther, but I just saw my opportunity to paint a tiger and had to go for it. So I kind of went to town on this one. Um, so that's awesome. Really cool thing. And then we get what they've called hunting drakes, which I'd not come across before. But if we just compare that to the rage drake from the Wrath of a Shardalon, it's like mummy and children. Um, so you get three of those rage, uh, sorry, hunting drakes. Uh, there's some rank and file stuff. You get three goblins with bows. And you get three goblins which are uh, wielding a little dagger or short sword. And then you get one goblin wielding a great big Dane axe or whatever they call it in D&D, um, great axe I think. Um, so always good to have more rank and file. But when you compare these to the old school goblins, the ones from the original game, they are a fraction of the size. D&D um, &D doesn't have snotlings, so uh, I, I was going to use them as goblin grubs, which would be goblins minus one. There's a bit of a dark elf theme to this particular one, Drizzt, of course, being a, a dark elf. Um, so you get these little stands of spiders. Which I'm going to try and zoom in on without losing focus, but that turns out to be impossible. I'm always going to lose the focus. So, um, yeah, little spider stands. So you really cool to have swarm models um, because I've always been loath to buy swarm models because they're so expensive they seem to think well the people that charge them seem to want to charge the same as a full-on model um, you get three water elementals uh, and they're made out of the clear resin so if you put a light behind there or you might even just be able to see you can I kept them semi-transparent I'm pretty sure this model was in this box that's a werewolf very human sized werewolf, so quite useful. There's a mind flayer. To control your brain and then eat it. And then we get bucket loads of dark elves. So we get a dark elf queen model uh, with a spider crown. And we get uh, presumably some kind of prince or something. Not entirely sure dark elves do princes, but and then there's this magic using guy, which I, did, I I thought that was out of scope for dark elves in D and D, but yeah, well whatever. Um, and then we get these like uh, three duelingy type, dual wielding, on guardy type rapier wielding psychopaths. But of course they're psychopaths, they're dark elves. Ah, I think this dwarf might have been in that set as well, so. Uh, generic dwarf. Um, can't use it as a cleric because sharp weapon, which is so often the case. People tell dwarf miniatures with axes, which is great, but warhammers will be more useful because then the model can either be a fighter or a cleric. You get this guy, which I, I think might be Drizzt. I don't know, I'm not intending to play the game, but he's got a little eye patch and uh, a kind of a hat on the back, sort of doing his whole Zorro thing. And get these models, which I didn't paint terribly well, I, I was having a go at trying to do swirling colours, but I watered it down too much. I was trying to keep it transparent, which was difficult. Uh, it didn't really work. Um, so they're meant to be... What are they meant to be? Hypnotic spirits. Um, so I was, I was going for swirling colours, but, you know, can't win every time. This is a yok lol uh, type of demon which has the ability to shape change into, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a spider or a dark elf, but it might be a drider and a dark elf. I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, but it's a demon, anyway, quite nasty piece of work. Um, but that's his true form. 
And then we get onto the biggies. We've got a Shadow Dragon um, from the Shadow Realm, so purple. And some nice detail on that model. It's a cool model, it's got a nice head. Um, so I quite like that one. And then there's the feature piece of the set. A Balor Demon, or Balrog if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. Um, which I, for once, didn't dry brush. This is, I, I used a stippling instead because I wanted his body to look like it was ashen. Um, which I think worked quite well. Uh, I did a bit of dry brushing on the face still, but... Um, so, yeah, really cool end of adventure monster there. So, um, so as sets go, it's got some cool final encounters, it's got some rank and file, and uh, it's got some generically useful uh, heroes. Not too sure about the dual-wielding dwarf, but... Well, actually, you never see many dual-wielding dwarves, but... Um, they're not really sort of down with that whole range of class, but... Yeah, may maybe it'll come in handy at some point. Um, some really useful stuff. I just couldn't bring myself to buy it twice because I don't know what I'd ever do with two shadow dragon, small shadow dragons, and two Balor. Oops, missed some. Uh, some of the good ones actually. Uh, so there's a Dryder. That's not going to focus, is it? I'll tell you what. Let me zoom in. So I've had to plug my camera in because I ran out of battery. And I'm now really struggling to um, uh, reach the table, so there's a drider. If I could just... Uh, nah. So, always useful to have some drider when you've got dark elves around. You only get one in the box, though. Uh, quite difficult to get drider because uh, there's only two places I've found that do them. There's other world miniatures that do some fantastic drider models, but they're like, I think they're about £9 each, really expensive. Um, or you can do what I've done, which is get Reaper Bones, um, which I can show you in a moment. Um, and then you get these two really big trolls, which, uh, let me <laughs> need to zoom out so you can see them, are uh, really cool models, and I love the sheer scale of them. And so that's how a troll should be, that kind of reminds me of, you know, The Hobbit. Um, really big trolls. Uh, I've done them as, uh, as uh, hill trolls or plains trolls, whichever, not, not cave trolls. When we compare that to the trolls of the old game, and you see they've come a long way, so... Um, you know, the new ones are uh, proper trolls, just how they should have been all along. Uh, so that's the Legend of Drizzt set, which leaves us with Castle Ravenloft. So let's start again with the heroes. And first up, we have a Dragonborn. Again, really useful. Oh, come on, focus. Again, really useful to get a Dragonborn hero because uh, they're quite hard miniatures to get at a reasonable price. Uh, we've then got a Dwarf Wizard, which is something you don't see very often. So again, another really useful model because sometimes players will play them and now I finally have a model for them. Uh, this one's rather strange. Uh, it's, he kind of looks a bit elfy, and he's got a sword, and in his other hand he's holding an arrow, but I guess you could argue it's a wand. Um, which, uh, I, I, I think that must have been the intention. Um, and then we've got this this wizard holding a spell, which I've painted up as a flame spell. Um, so, you know, always useful to have another wizard. Um, and then we've got a dual-wielding female fighter in plate. So, uh, again, useful fighters or useful heroes. Um, you know, stuff that's actually really handy and sometimes hard to get hold of, so it's a good collection. So the miniatures, or monsters, I'll start with the smaller stuff. We have three stands of rats. Um, always useful to have swarms and so nice to to finally get some because, uh, as I may have mentioned earlier, I've always avoided buying them because I always thought they were ridiculously expensive um, for what they were. Uh, we get three kobolds, uh, just kobolds with spears, not particularly anything special. And then we get a little kobold caster, which is useful because I've got a massive horde of kobolds now. I've got uh, just over 20 of them and it's nice to finally get a magic user in there as well. Um, 
because I have a I have a couple of champions in plate armor and stuff, um, but now to actually have a cobalt caster, that's really cool. So I like that. Next up, we've got some spiders, so that goes really well with the Dark Elves and the Drider and the spiders and stuff from The Legend of Drizzt, but um, it seems to be in Castle Ravenloft we have giant spiders, so a good complimentary set of monsters for me, but obviously if you're only buying one set then not so complimentary, but always useful to have a few spiders in dungeons. Then we've got another wraith-like model. Now these came in the clear blue plastic again, so they're, they're sort of see-through by default. Um, the way I've painted them, you probably can't, well, you can just about tell, I think. Uh, I think it will show up with some light behind them. Um, so I decided to paint them a bit differently to normal, keep them transparent and keep them blue. Um, because, uh, well, I've got grey and I have green, so now I have a blue spirit too. Uh, this actually calls them, uh, this this says they're wraiths, so three wraiths. Uh, but the thing about those kind of models, you can use them for anything. Now Castle Ravenloft has quite a lot of undead, so um, we're going to start with the zombies. Um, quite a, a sort of shambling zombie type model, very raggedy, so that's quite cool. And then the flesh-eating ghouls. Isn't Castle Ravenloft's entrance supposed to be guarded by intelligent flesh-eating zools or something? Ghouls, even. Um, or am I thinking of something else? Don't know. Anyway, uh, there we go. Flesh-eating ghouls munching on some poor sod's hand, which I've done as decayed and deceased. Then we get on to the skeletons. Uh, again, there's three of these. Um, and I've got a, a sort of star-shaped pattern, so I did them red and blue, uh, so it's a union flag in my case, or, or could be argued that's a union flag. That's why in a previous video I called them my right-wing skeletons. Um, yeah, a bit patriotic. Anyway, um, then, and I love these, we've got flaming skeletons. I'll do that one pacing backward, there we go. Um, you get a skeleton with all this flame around him, and it's just really is a cool model. Absolutely love it. They come in the clear blue plastic, but I decided not to keep the transparency. I wanted it to look like it's on fire, um, and I I think it's come out really well. Love these models. Another always useful model. We get three wolves. So um, yeah. You know, really always handy to have some wolves. Add them to the others from the uh, original expansion. And uh, an old lead one I found, that gives me seven wolves, I think, to throw at players now, which should be enough. And we get some gargoyles. Um, it's nice to have some uniform gargoyles, actually, because, I mean, I've got, I've got the Reaper Bones one. Hang on. So this is the Reaper Bones one, and it kind of looks very much like it's already animated and you know, it's on its way to get you. Um, what I quite like about these is it's like the inanimate gargoyle. It's in that, it's kind of in a pose that it could be on top of a building, although the arm position kind of says, no, actually, I am awake. But, you know, the point of a gargoyle is it's meant to look like it's a statue, an ornate decoration. Um, and then comes to life when it sees something to eat. So, reasonable models there. Right, now we get on to the feature pieces. And I'm not 100% sure that um, this particular model came in this set. I think it did. Uh, I've called it a howling hag. So I've painted it up as a night hag, far more useful. Um, add that to my green hag and I'm just one short of a coven now. I need to find a sea hag from somewhere. But I think, I think that's a cool model. Then we get to a flesh golem, and uh, I just do love the way his flesh is falling off his arm there and revealing his muscle. Um, so that's the flesh golem, much bigger than the reaper one. So this is the reaper bones flesh golem, 
as you see, I mean, it's a whole different class of monster, this one, which makes it useful in itself, um, you know, to have a, a giant guardian. And then this is kind of a funny model, this is a zombie dragon, and I, I am denied over whether to do this as a, a red dragon that had been raised again, or whether to do my zombie flesh effect, where I kind of paint red and brown splodges and then, you know, put red lines in the cuts and stuff. Um, and I went for the flesh in the end. I figured that it lost its draconic nature when it became undead, so I, I went for that. As the model skirt had a very flimsy wings. Um, and there's a vampire, which, I mean, he could just as easily be a hero, frankly. With a big two-handed sword wielded in one hand or something. Um, but, yeah, apparently a vampire. Uh, that's supposed to be Count Strahd or whatever it's called. Um, and then, the best model of all. I wanted one of these for years. It's a Dracolich. Check it out. Well, I could take the camera off the tripod, but I didn't have enough battery, so... Uh, to get any closer anyway, so um, I bring the model in. There we go, some leathery wings and bits of muscle still just dripping off him, still visible in places. And I always wanted a Dracolich, ever since I went to Plane of Hate in EverQuest. Not Hate, Plane of Fear. Um, there was a Dracolich up there and I was just awesome, you know, undead dragon, how cool is that? Um, and now I finally got one, so uh, I'm happy. <laughs> really cool set. So, as sets go, again, I couldn't justify buying two. I don't know what I'd do with two Dracolich, two zombies, and two giant flesh golems. There's some good rank and file, some good undead, a uh, good mix of stuff. And, you know, it's nice to get blazing skeletons instead of skeletons, because they are so cool. Um, really do like how they uh, came out in the end. If that'll come in focus, give me focus. I mean, what a model. Um, you know, the heroes are good, they're useful, it's good stuff. I really like the Castle Ravenloft set. In summary then, the D&D board games, I don't know why you'd play them as board games. Uh, okay, they can be played one player. Um, board games as one player are always boring. Um, so I don't know why you'd do that. Uh, if you've got time to play one of these games, you're probably, if you know, if you're into Dungeons and Dragons, you're probably going to play the real thing not a board game. Um, is there a market for these? Well, as box sets of models, yes. 40 odd models, 36 quid. That's a good deal. I, the only snag is I feel guilty about all the stuff I'm basically throwing away. I mean, I'll never use that other stuff. All those cards, all those floor plans, I won't use them. Um, I feel bad about that. <laughs> what a waste. Uh, I kind of wish that big box sets of plastic minis were uh, more widely available. Uh, I know it's hard to manufacture them. Plastic minis involve making metal moulds, which are very expensive, cost several thousand pounds. Um, you know, you get like half a dozen on a mould or whatever, and it's, you know, a few grand for all the metal and stuff. And, and yeah, that's that's uh, makes it hard for a manufacturer to put stuff like this together. There's only a few companies big enough to do that. You know, Reaper, Wizards of the Coast, um, most of the, the small model makers, they can't do that. They have to work in pewter. So uh, I wish that box sets of models, of plastic minis like this, which can, which can be mass produced and thrown out, I, I wish they are a bit more common. Um, but they aren't, so instead I'll be buying the board games and throwing stuff away, which is kind of a Western thing to do, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, you know, disposable society. Um, but, you know, that that is, unfortunately, the best way to get large stocks of minis like this. Um, the D&D &D ones that they sell in boxes, little boxes of four or whatever, um, I can't bring myself to buy them because uh, no shops around here sell them for a start anyway, but I'd have to buy them online. Um, you're buying models that you don't know what they are, it's random what you get inside, and they're pre-painted to a low standard. Now, I'm not the best painter in the world, but what I enjoy from this is painting them myself. I got a lot of enjoyment, and, you know, that's several weekends worth of painting there, um, and that's what I do it for. I barely ever play with these miniatures. I, I mostly only use them for my YouTube videos, um, and I, I, I just enjoy painting them. 
Um, so why do they sell them all pre-painted and there never seems to be an unpainted option? Certainly not that I can find online. Or, so, you know, I've been having to buy them, uh, you know, in these board games. It's the only way uh, for me. Um, and I kind of, you know, the miniature industry, it, it they charge a lot of money. I mean, some companies, well, you know, forget Games Workshop, obviously they charge a fortune. You need a mortgage just to buy, you know, a small... A uh, group of heroes, four heroes, would cost you, um, you know, about the size of a house. Um, so it, it, aside from them, uh, there are there are companies out there um, making models, and they're charging somewhere between sort of five and ten pounds a model. And for one of those things, that's ridiculous money. Um, and I just can't justify it when you look at box sets like this, you get 40 odd models, 36 quid. I mean, it's a done deal, I'm just going to buy that, aren't I? Um, and then Reaper Bones, um, they're, they're generally somewhere around £1.50 a model. So that's fantastic. I'll pay that. Um, that I, I just can't bring myself to pay five, £10 a model. Um, it's not worth that to me. But these are fantastic.